Hi. Hello. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ah, it's fantastic to be here. Um, I don't wake up so early like uh, normally, but um, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you very much. I'm not sure you cannot learn anything from me. I'm not really sure, so don't write any notes. But I'm going to try to explain a little bit my philosophy and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. I my name is Magnus Kevin. I basically was so lucky. I played a moving superhero during the day, and by the night, I was a CEO. So it was quite interesting, actually. I come from a very small town. It's so small, there was four people in my class. And we couldn't even make it to a football team. It was not even possible. And if you want to get married, you say, you want to marry me? No, because it was only like two girls. You want to marry me? No, you're out. So it, it, the town is so small, it's so, yeah, it's there. There it is. It's really small. And I even come from a smaller country called Iceland, and we barely made a football team. But we made it to the world competition. It was quite nice. You only need 11, so how difficult can it be? So, in what I want to do, I really want to do something. I want to do something, like uh, for movement, I always love to move. So I went on a mission to basically motivate families to make healthy lifestyle choices. So I really want to move kids, I want to move families, and I really want to move the world. This was an idea, this is like 30 years ago, when I was young. Uh, so I created something called Lazy Town. And Lazy Town is a town that everybody's really lazy, but they're, uh, they're lucky because they have a superhero who actually is motivating them, to, motivating them to move. And then you have this guy called Sporagus, and then you have a girl called Stephanie, and she's a new in town. And then you have Robbie Rotten, who is the laziest villain on the planet. He is trying to get people not active. And it is amazing with people who don't want you to move, they make an enormous effort that you don't move. It's unbelievable. So Robbie is maybe the most active guy in the whole place. This is the whole gang. So people ask me, because you created Lazy Town, you must be lazy. Do you never sleep in the middle of the day and take a nap? And I say, yeah, yeah, I do that. That is healthy. That is not lazy. Remember Yoko Ono and John Lennon? They were in bed for, for about 10 days a week. They were not lazy. You're not necessarily lazy if you lay down and sleep is maybe good for you. You are lazy when you don't care anymore. Then you're really, really lazy. So you say, I'm not poor, I don't care about poor people. Or you say, I, I, I'm, I'm a grown up, I'm not a kid, I don't care about kids. Or you say, ah, I don't live in Iceland, I don't care about that country at all. I live in England. Or you say, like, anything, you should care about everything. Everything, you should care about your town, you should care about your, your parents, you should care about everything. Every single thing matters. Because when you don't care, people can feel it. They can see it. It's exactly the same if I don't move this part of my arm and I come in and I say, hello, how are you? You would see immediately there's something wrong with my arm. And people see immediately when you don't care. They can see it in your eyes. I don't know if you have ever played a Santa Claus. Have you played a Santa Claus? So when you play a Santa Claus, you have all this stuff in your face, but they still can see in your eyes, ah, it's not Santa Claus, you're faking it. You're not really good, you're drunk. Almost. So, but there's huge power to be lazy. There's enormous power because one person can drag the whole team down. One, even one president can take a country down or a one human being. There's enormous power to be lazy. It's enormous. So I think we should lean forward all the time. We should really, really lean forward. We should be leaning forward in life like this. Every single day, I need a very handsome man. Can you please come up? Come up, jump on the stage for me. So I need the help here. What's your name? Andreu. Andreu, how are you? Fine. So I need your help. Can you stand and lean to me now? Lean to me. Yes. Look, this is how Andreu should be every single day of his life. And you also. Every single day, you should be like that. And everybody should feel it. Be yeah. <laughs> because no one 
nobody really wants to do a business with somebody who is sitting down and doing this. Okay, you want to buy this car? <laughs> Even if you go to Japan, they sit like this. And they're having us in the meetings. We are from Iceland. We are sometimes doing all kinds of things. But this shows that you're leaning forward. Because when you know where you're going, if you want to take and you want to move people, you want to do something, if it's something you want to do, automatically this is going to happen. Lean forward. So if I let him go, <laughs> he is going to step forward. Otherwise, he's going to land on his face. Look. Or he does a push-up, <laughs> which is actually quite nice. <laughs> yes. But there is a reason he's moving forward. If he would fall and step, he would go. If he do a push-up, he can do 500 and keep going. But there's one thing he's not doing. He's not standing in the middle. A lot of people lean in the back. Because they are like, no, you cannot do it. It's not possible. No, it's horrible. It costs too much money. You cannot do it. You can never do it. So I'm going to go really back. A lot of people are in the middle. And normally women are in the middle. You know why? Because men are a little bit more stupid than women. And they say, <laughs> women are much smarter. They, are, they, are, they know they can do it. But men would say, I can do it. They do it. Women are like, of course I can do it better than this guy. But... I'm not sure, what about this and that? They're always thinking. So I would say to women, lean more forward and ask for more money. <laughs> it, you should do this, I want 10,000, I want a million. Because you can do it, it's after the show. Thank you very much, Anders, thank you very much. So lean forward, it's extremely important to lean forward. You can see it immediately. So, why should we move? Why are we meeting together to move, why? Why does everybody need to move? Why is that so important? Why? Why are we like, you have to move? You have to move. Why? That is a big question. And let's go back in time. Let's go 180,000 years ago or, or before Christ. What they did then is that they did one thing when they moved. And they did it exactly the same also 130,000 years ago, and also 90,000 years ago, and 60 years, and 30,000, even 10,000 before Christ. And even year one, they did exactly the same. And even 1500, they did exactly the same. And even 1995, no, <laughs> 1950s. Almost for the last 100 years to 50 years, we are doing it differently than all the generations have done before. We are just doing it differently. The last 50 years, we are doing it differently. Because all, everybody who was doing anything about movement in the old days, they did it to do what? To survive. Just to survive. That's it. And if you don't move, you're going to die. So the main pressure who's coming, if I don't move, I'm going to die. I need to move, change places. I need to hunt. I need to learn how to hunt. I need to climb, to shoot. or I need to do things. I really, oh, there's a big lion coming. I need to run. <laughs> so basically, you need to move. Nobody moved. <laughs> this is so much fun. <laughs> Nobody was doing that. Nobody. Nobody was doing, I need to really go and hunt. And this is, ha, <laughs> ha, high five. No one was doing any high fives. This was serious business. This was life and death situation. So 1950s, or maybe 100 years, or last 100 years, or maybe 50 years, this starts to change. And it starts to change a lot. And it starts to change in that way. We move because of different reasons. So I'm going to name a few. I'm going to name a seven, for example. There are much more, like traveling, people are... Transportation, people go to work maybe on a bike, so transportation. But normally it's like this, <coughs> physical health, that's one reason. So it's a little bit like you know, it's good for your heart, it's good for your physical health. It's good for your blood, it's good for you. Knowledge, we, we, we are wrecked, the doctor tells us blah, 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 blah. Somebody comes and tells us something, we learn more, okay? There's basically mental health. Mental health would basically, oh, it, it, it take my stress away. Oh, it's very good. I feel good. Dopamine in the brain. Okay? It's sports 
and games. You do, you play football or soccer or you, hobby, it's, it's a hobby. You, you're not doing any sport, basically it's a hobby. Or it's social thing. You go walk with your friends around the neighborhood. That's it. But, or nature, you go explore the nature, you're gonna look, you walk on a mountain, you bicycle in the nature, or it's a pressure. All the media is like bombarded with things that you have to have this kind of ass and you have to have this six pack and you have to have all kind of shit. And people are doing it like, oh, I have to get, get, get ass. Like Kim Tart Kardashian, she's doing this. And it's ridiculous. I was almost 20 years in the fitness industry since I was 16 till I was like 30. And I've never seen more unhealthy people than actually in the fitness industry. They're extremely unhealthy. Because they're like, the, the main purpose was to shape the body to, to be something. They, they don't understand, if I did a push-up, or if I do something, automatically I get six-packs. That, that's a bonus, it's not the, that's what I'm aiming at. And I'm not aiming at to get a great ass, it's ridiculous. But, there is enormous pressure. You cannot open a magazine, boom. You cannot go to the social media, boom. The pressure is there. Absolutely. So, all of this what we are doing today, we want to do it, all of this together, we want to do it, and we want to do it how? There's a difference. We are not going to survive. Nobody's going, <laughs> maybe yes, it's possible. If I don't get the ass of Kim Kardashian, I'm going to die. It's possible. But if you put a trans implant, maybe you're going to die. But, <laughs> but why? Why, why are we doing this today? We are doing it because we want to have fun. We want to, it, it, it's, it's an entertainment. It is like we want to do it because we have a physical health and everything, but at the same time we want to have fun doing it. We want to yell, woo-hoo, woo! We want, to, we want to have fun doing it. We want to smile when we do it. So we need new ideas. We need new ideas for schools, entertainment, gyms, nature, everything. We need the new ideas. Crazy, lot of ideas. And that's where you come in. <laughs> you are the people who are gonna create this and fill the gap next thousand of years. You're gonna come with new ideas, like boom, 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 boom. That's what we need. That is a reality, because the entertainment, the train is already left the station. So you need to be creative and do, 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 to motivate people to move. That is a reality. That, that is a reality. So let's say 180,000 before Christ, our body developed our skills to survive. This is what we know. And, the, and what we did, we learned a lot of skills. We learned, we went with our parents or, or, or to hunt. We learned how to climb a tree. We learned a lot from the other people in the village. And we learned how to behave. And there's a certain things. If you didn't do this, you're going to die. You, then you, you, you're dead. And then everybody said, don't do that again. Let's do something else. Don't do this jump, you're gonna die. Okay, we're never gonna do that jump. And the body keeps it in the memory, in the DNA. We keep it. We know this is a generation for generation to generations. So we learned a lot, but the body is so smart. It's extremely smart because the body is extremely lazy. The body, is, this is really, that's why we are struggling with this. That's why you are here. The struggle is because the body tells you, don't move. Because he wants to save energy. He is thinking, for millions of years, it's a survivor. So if I, if I come a lion, ah, there's a lion. I need to run as fast as I can. Then I cannot be doing jumping jacks for pleasure. And then the lion comes, <laughs> I'm dead. So they say, don't move, because you're going to use it. You're going to, you need that energy to get away, you, to survive. So basically, the body takes all this in and keeps it for years and generations to come. We learn that. And the body knows, if you kill the body, he's going to take over. So he has a thing in the body that maybe you are stupid. Sometimes you're like, ah, oh my God, I got a stupid hat. <laughs> so the body thinks like, oh my God, I got this guy. He's doing something really stupid. So I'm going to take over. I'm really going to take over. And what do we do? The perfect body takes over. So let's say, for example, you work too much. You go and you work like crazy because you have to be at work. You have to get more money. You have to work. 
what happened. The body tries to tell you, don't work so much. And you go, yes, I'm going to go up and work more. And the body tells you, don't go to work. And yes, I'm going. And then suddenly the body says, I need to do something with this guy. I'm going to put back pain. And you're like, oh, I've been working all day and all week, and now I have a pain in my back. And if you don't see that, you, don't, you ignore the signals, you have a problem. The body is going to say, we have a stupid guy here. So I'm going to put something. What about we put black under his eyes? Because I know he's brushing his teeth every morning, and he has a mirror. And he look at himself. He cannot be that stupid that he can, because he can maybe not see the back problem, but he can really see his face. Okay? So I'm going to put black under his eyes. But still you go to work. You say, have a little makeup, and then keep going. You don't listen. And we don't listen anymore to this. And if you eat bad food, drink too much wine, eat something bad, what does the body do? It takes over. It's not because of you say, ha, now I'm really drunk. I really want to throw up. It's not like a decision. It's that you throw up. And even if you get a sand in your eye, just a little sand, even if you're going to be the coolest guy in the room, ha, I'm, ha, I'm so cool. I'm really cool. <laughs> but you are going to cry. The body is going to say, boop, boop, there's a stupid guy. He doesn't take it out. <laughs> Let's put liquid so he can take it out. That's going to happen. And even, even if you, let's say you're going to be the coolest guy in the room, and there will be cold outside, you would go out and you tell all the group, I'm going to be outside naked. I'm not going to move. And you stand like, <laughs> everybody's like, wow, he's not moving. Yeah. Suddenly the body thinks, they start to think, wow, this is a stupid guy. <laughs> so the body takes over, shoo-boom, and he says, you start to do what? To move. Because you're too cold, what happens? You start to shiver. Body tries to start to move, <laughs> because you start to make heat, because you are too stupid to make heat by yourself. Even if I put hole in my hair and the blood goes, the body knows the brain cannot lose blood, so I faint automatically, so the blood goes to my head. This is how body is perfect, but we don't listen to it anymore. We are not listening to it at all. We just move on like crazy. So, move should be fun, but for the generations before us, a lot of generations before, there was one thing was not there. That movement was fun. It's not in the DNA. The body is not telling, ha, there's a stupid guy, you have to move. Not really. He starts to send you sickness if you're going to kill the body. But if you're living a normal life, he's not pushing you to move. He's pushing you to lay down. So that's where our problem is. We are in between that you're not dying. When people are sick, they do everything. They eat, change the diet, they start to move more because there is a pressure that you are sick, you want to get healthy. But when you are healthy, you don't even know that you're healthy. So you, that's the challenge. So let's say kids. Kids know how to move because when you are the human being, deep inside, they really know how to move. Deep inside, they know. But for generation, they didn't know. They know how to move, but they didn't know this was supposed to be fun. But they liked it. But they were not allowed to run and laugh. <laughs> they were not allowed to do it. You have never seen a cowboy movie that people go, okay, guys, we're going to have a shoot down, but I'm going to take a run before. Just for jogging. That's not going to happen. So kids know how to move. They really know how to move. And... If a child doesn't move, you know immediately there's something wrong. When you look in a room and the child doesn't move at all, you know there's something wrong. So, but the kids know. And if you motivate kids to move, if you really motivate them, they move. If you come to a kid and say, guys, let's go, you have an idea, let's go to a theme park, a uh, water park. The kids will say, yes, yes, let's go. They move automatically. So I believe if we motivate people and there's enough excitement, people are going to move automatically. They are going to do it. So our job is not to teach them all the techniques that you have to do jumping jacks like this. You have to do this. Not like that. It's about the motivation. So basically what it is, 
Kids know exactly how to do this. We don't need to teach them this. For example, if when you look at kids playing, this is how they play. I'm playing. How would we play? This is how we, when we get older, we stop doing this. We stop picking things up like that. We do this. Till we are 32, we are like, ah, I cannot do it anymore. The pain comes. And the body tells me, ah, that's what's happened. So kids know how to move, exactly. So we need to create new ideas for kids to move. That's what we need to do. At the age of zero to seven, Kids learn how to walk and talk and behave and everything. This is the golden years. This is like a swamp. They, they take everything in. This is the most important time to basically motivate kids that movement is fun. It's zero to seven. That's where it happens. If we can do that, they're going to stay with that for their lives. But if that time is boring, even from zero to 12, you go to school, and you don't like the, gym, the teacher in the gym. And it's boring. You don't want to be in the gym. It's horrible. You want to be doing math. It's going to kill that movement. It's going to be fun. Because it's not entertaining at all. So basically what happened? 100,000 years, our ancestors basically passed on movement to the next generation to survive. And they did it by teaching them different things. So I, I show you a little bit. Can you do this? Can you do this up and down? This is the only movement you're going to do now. <laughs> can you do it? <laughs> up and down. Doink, 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 doink. Can you take the other hand? And can you make a set with the other hand? Like this. Set. Can you do it together? <laughs> it's not because you're not good at it. You're going to come later today and say, Magnus, fuck you. Look at this. <laughs> like, that's what's going to happen. So, so uh, you can say, we know how to do this. Okay. So, but... The reason why you cannot do it, because you haven't practiced. So you need to basically practice and again and again and again and again. That, that, that's the case. So in the old days, you went with your mom and dad to hunt, you climb a tree, you were doing things with the whole tribes. This is what happens. So you learn on different skills. And, but to teach it, they thought, wow, we want to be better at this. We need to do something. We cannot go hunting and teach at the same time because then maybe the kid is going to die or the young person is going to die. So they start to figure out how can we do it. And they use a technique called ears and eyes. And I think this is what is lost today. i give you for example. Ears and eyes is that you really listen, either to a sound, you have to move after music, you have to go boo, boo, doo, 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 or something you have to, or we created balls. When it moves, boom, boom. It's a movement, boom, boom, boom. We look the eyes, boom. It's a fantastic ball. It's maybe the best training I've ever been on the planet. It moves and it's games and it's motivation. It's, it's fantastic. And the guy who found out that game, he should be a billionaire. Maybe he's dead, okay? So, ears and eyes is extremely important. So, they came up with something called Dancing. And they put up in the tribes and everywhere where they are, they start to make folk dances. In every nation, there's folk dancing millions of years back that you have to, even in Hungary, you are, you are doing this, what do you call it? Like in a circle, like you're doing, like to, you go, like to, you do all kind of this. And even in, in some countries, there's river dancing in some countries. They're line dancing, like in cowboy country. Yeah, let's go, they, they do. They are tribe dancing. There's all kinds of things that you have. We go hunting and we learn the dance and we do it. And even in the Ludwig the 14th, there was like a square dancing. There was like, you have to do certain things to dance. And if you didn't do it, you are kicked out of the castle. You have to do, you cannot fuck it up. You cannot be in the circle in Hungary and just do, oh, you're not going to do it. You're going to be, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? You're going to be fired. We are doing this, yes? So it's a certain move that everybody do exactly the same. So you are training your body to move after an object when you are hunting. And if you can follow something who you are hunting, you can also follow a person who are moving and you follow. We we'll use your ears and eyes. That's what you do. So 
It was good to survive, and they, they taught people and everything, but it was also good for the military, because they realized if we train people more, they can do more stuff. They can actually go and conquer countries. So even in the military today, everybody walk in line. <laughs> they march. <laughs> they don't really need that. Have you ever seen in the battlefield? <laughs> They're never using it. What are they practicing? They are practicing that, that everybody has to do exactly the same thing. Kids don't do it today. Kids do whatever they like. If you're dancing in the old days, you would go to a lady, you would ask her to dance, and you start to dance like a waltz, or you would do rock and roll or something. <laughs> But today, you're not even touching the person. You're in the bar, yo, oh yeah, you're not even close. There's a lot of smoke in the, in the discotheque, and you can't even see the person. Oh, where are you? Oh, she's gone. <laughs> so, They are never doing anything that really needs to be done because they don't do that. They never practice like that at all. So, but it was not fun. In the military, it was not fun. There was nothing funny about this. Nobody was laughing. So now, we need to laugh. Now is the first time in history that we are doing movement without surviving. We are doing it because it's fun. So, let's say here, 100 years ago, Let's take the age group, zero to 12. So what happened with this age group, 1900? What are they doing, zero to 12, in movement? Before that, they have been surviving, okay? So what are they doing? Kids, 100 years ago, they moved a little bit by their own. They may be climbing a tree, maybe walking around a little bit, and then they have to start to work. As soon as you can work, you're going to work. So the movement was in the work. 13 to 60 years old, they did a tiny little of movement, very little, the rest was just work. And the old people, just work. Nobody old person can say, now I'm going to stop working and do some exercises. Yeah, no. People looked, are you crazy? So, 30 years ago, in the 80s, what happened to this group, 0 to 12? It was exactly the same. Except kids was left on their own, parents sometimes, but not so very often. We parents, we told our kids, be quiet, don't move so much, go in the other room, go out, do something. We didn't say, yeah, move around as much as you can on the airplane. There's a crazy kid on the airplane, ah! You and I like, way, bravo, pish. No, sit down. Here, now in the 80s, certain thing happened, extraordinary things. Suddenly it came like Jane Fonta. And she was doing like maniac, maniac. <laughs> Lot of exercises all over. Woo! <laughs> and she was doing all this stuff. And uh, suddenly sold 300,000 millions of videos or whatever it was. It was like crazy. There was a crazy, I don't remember how much it was, 300,000. And there was like everybody was doing something. John Travolta came staying alive. Everybody went out uh, and danced, and the grease came and it was like, wow! It's crazy, everybody was moving. So suddenly it came a decade that people start to understand, wow, maybe it is fun. Maybe you don't need to survive. Maybe I have more time. Maybe I need to do blah, blah, blah. But at the same time, there came a lot of food, who is a challenge for us, because then you have to move more, because you're eating more. So, but still the old people 30 years ago, they didn't move at all. At all. So, I thought... Because I was in this industry here, I was going around the world and tell people what was the next thing in fitness, blah, 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 there's a step, there's spinning, there's like whatever you call it. But I thought, maybe this is not right. Maybe we, I should focus on this group here, start early with this group. So I thought, I need to start early to motivate kids that they want to move for the rest of their life so we don't have to always be uh, crazy. So, Why, in my case, we don't, if we don't start early to motivate kids about moving, it's going to be a problem because the health system is going to collapse. That is a reality. So certainly rich people 
can only be healthy. And this is a shit. And we need to change it immediately. So, we need to be positive role models. Kids can see us. I, 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 I see parents who are locked in the computer all the day and they tell the kids, you cannot be in the computer. But they're all the time, always on the phone, and they're telling the kids, don't do it, you have to move. So you have to be a role model, and the, the whole city has to be a role model, the whole town has to be a role model. Everybody has to be there, everyone. So you have to involve kids. So for example, let's say, if you tell them, they will for forget, show me, and I might remember, and involve me, and I will understand. So let's say you go, and I tell you about a football game, Liverpool, Manchester United. You don't really remember it 50 years. But if you showed me we went to the game, we would remember it better. If we played the game, if you were the guy who was playing, you're going to remember it for life. So you have to involve kids immediately. Involve them. Don't talk down to kids. Involve them. And you can't tell kids, if you eat this, if you move, you're going to be healthy when you're 21. The kids is going to look at you, I'm never going to be 21. I don't even know it's a coming a weekend coming up. I have no idea. So kids don't understand that later in life something is going to happen. So my question was, can education for a healthy lifestyle be entertaining? Is it really doable? That was the question. I realized that 30 years ago, actually, there was no role model in health for kids. There was Popeye, Popeye and, uh, who eats spinach, but he smoked and hit people. <laughs> and you thought, maybe that's not a good role model. Maybe we need a different role model for kids. And there was no entertainment brand dedicated to kids' health in the world. There was none. And I always said, Lazy Town is number one in the health of children in the world. <laughs> it was not because we were number one. We were the only one. <laughs> so it was, I want to use technical ear and eyes. This is what I want to use uh, because I believed in it, to make movement fun. So I think age group, zero to seven, they love, if you, if you study kids, you understand they like sounds. Like when they're playing. <laughs> All kinds of sounds. So kids love sounds. They also love movements, what they can do. So, and they want to imitate live characters. They don't want to be a Mickey Mouse. There's no kids jumping, I am Mickey Mouse. No one. But they will be Batman, Spider-Man. They will be people that are alive, that physically can do stuff. So, I'm going to show you a movement we did in Lazy Town. It's this one. This is a sound with music, with sound that kids do before they move. And everywhere where I go around the world, kids show me this. And they, they come, hey, sportsmen, look at this. So it could be if we want to do a campaign that if you put this in your phone, and each time your phone rings, these sounds would come, your kids would move when you're talking on the phone. And your kids would be, ah, the phone is ringing. So maybe your kid is going to move. Possible. So my idea was health. And I thought it was going to be really easy. I thought health is where everybody wins. That's easy. The only thing I have to do is to explain health. This is going to be extremely easy. I explain health and it's gone. I put it up on a wall, everybody sees it. But when you read it, it doesn't say Paris in the spring. It says Paris in, this, in their, their spring. And even if we write it up in the biggest poster, people are not going to get it. So when you think people understand you, they don't. So when you have all those ideas that you have, and you're going to introduce it to investors or introduce it to somebody, people don't get it. You think they do, but they don't. And you think because you're talking about it all the time, but they don't. So, what would you say is, a, because the challenge was for me 30 years ago, I was thinking, okay, I'm going to explain health. What is a healthy person? If I run four marathons, I'm a lunatic or I'm a healthy? If I did 500 push-ups in one arm, I'm a lunatic or I'm a stupid? 
or I'm a healthy? That's the big question. So what is a healthy person? I found out after millions of years doing it, I would say healthy person is a person in balance. That would be good, okay? But I'm gonna explain to you. If we have football, it's very easy. We would, you are my, my, my specialist, and we are gonna talk about football. We're gonna explain football. I would say, okay, explain football. You start to say, you have to throw this, and you have to kick, and you can do this, 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 and we write it down, punto, finito. We put it on TV, everybody watch it, and we sell merchandising. So we explain it, show it, sell it, that's it. But if we change football into health, that's where the problem starts. So I would yell, what is a healthy person? Let's explain health. And we start to write. We think it's punto. Then somebody says, no, no, no. It's also healthy to uh, walk to work. Ah, we write that down. And then somebody, it's also healthy to bicycle to work. Okay, let's put that. It's also healthy to swim to work. Who swims to work? <laughs> In Bangladesh. Okay, so it's endless. It's like to explain love or explain humor. You cannot explain it. It's not possible. So, health, you couldn't put it on TV. Kids would never watch it. Business, what is the business? So you have something you cannot explain. You're not allowed to show it. And how on earth are we going to sell it? That was the challenge. So I'm going to, you have a paper? Do you have a paper? Take the paper. We're going to do this. Hold the paper. We're going to do a test. Are you ready? Nobody's going to fail in this test. You're going to hold it. I'm going to give you five directions, and you're going to do it. I'm going to explain how difficult it is to come with an idea. You hold it. You're going to close your eyes. You cannot open your eyes. Otherwise, you have to do 500 push-ups <laughs> on the stage. OK, you hold it. OK, and close your eyes. Five directions. Fold the paper in half. Don't open your eyes. Turn it 180. Fold the paper to the left. Rip the left corner off. Fold it in half and rip the center off. And now, open the paper. Nobody in the room has the same paper. Let me see it. No one in the room has exactly the same paper. No one. Nobody has even similar paper. But there is possible there's one or two, and then maybe we should get married. <laughs> so the thing is, it's not because you are really bad, it's not because you are bad, it's because my explanation sucks. But I said it all. I said, fold the paper in half, turn it 180, fold it to the left, take the left corner off, take it, fold it in half and rip the center off. I said everything, but still you didn't get it. So the problem is that when you think people understand you, they don't. So I'm going to move very quickly now. So this is the underground of London. This is what you need to do. You need to take it from this to that. This is what you need to do with all your presentation, everything you're explaining to people about movement. So I tested Lazy Town for many, many years. I'm going to go very quick in Iceland before I took it out of Iceland. I went to 3,000 live events, 52 different countries. It started as a book, it was alive, it was music, it was games, it was a radio station. We increased sales of fruit and vegetables by 22%. We did mini marathon. Obesity of Iceland went down, 1996. And I was in my sofa watching TV, laying down. No, I was doing push-ups, watching TV. And I was looking at the TV, and the health minister of Iceland was on the TV. And they said, obesity went down, why? And the health minister said, because of Lazy Town. And I was like, what? What? And I, on Monday, I called them and asked them to write it down for me. And then the president wrote down for me how much impact it has on the country. So Lazy Town, we knew we had a solution when we tried it. The kids would move. So we made a TV. We built a, a studio. We filmed Lazy Town. We got Lazy Town in almost over 500 million homes, 172 countries. And won a lot of awards, BAFTA, Emmys, and everything. But the challenge was, is it was about health. And you couldn't sell to kids shit, plastic shit, and chocolate. Because you can see, the challenge is, next generation, 
that, that, that is always going to live longer. Life expectancy is always longer for the next generations. But now in first time in history, it's possible that kids are living sicker and dying younger. It's first time in history. It's possible. So 500 people obese, 155 million kids is going to be a lot. So what are we up against? Kids don't know what to eat or Parents don't know what to buy, and the market is full of messages that nobody understands. So every single kids brand in the world is this. They are bombard kids with this every single day with all kinds of... Uh, I'm going to show you. I ask a lady to go and shop. I ask her to go in and shop, fill the basket in three minutes, only healthy. Look. Three minutes, and she's going to shop, only healthy. Nothing else. He went in. And in the beginning it was not a problem. And then it starts to be a problem. It was problem, 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 problem. And then the time was up. And even the basket was with things in it that was not really healthy. She was struggling. She couldn't fill the basket, it was not even possible. So I asked her to do it again. Now she has to shop only unhealthy. Cannot be anything healthy, but she has to be blindfolded. She cannot see anything. And she was supposed to shop only unhealthy, nothing healthy. She had three minutes. She went in. She went in. And even she was struggling to find, sometimes it was a struggle, she couldn't even find the basket. But she could easily fill the basket. She had 38 seconds left and the basket was full. So the reason is, when your eyes are open, you cannot really shop healthy. With the eyes closed, you can shop. This is it. So, basically, we need to turn health into a game. And that's what we did. We call it sports candy, lead by samples, millions of kids start to eat fruit and vegetables. We increased sales of fruit and vegetables by 28% in the UK. We did 41% again. We started in Mexico, 29%, etc., etc., etc. It's the highest export in Mexico with, with the food. 30 years ago, we arrived at the wrong time. But now we are right. So basically, the government are seeking out for advice, like coming... Uh, Italy, Philip Calderon, Mexico, Prince of Spain, and, and even the White House, Michelle Obama. And, uh, and, but now there's a new guy in the White House. <laughs> and he's eating McDonald's. I don't know what's going to happen, but it's going to be interesting. So in the end, guys, smile. because a massive change, and kids are moving. Kids are smiling. Kids are starting to understand that movement is equal fun. They do it. So we need to go there. I'm going to do now... 30 seconds, let's go really quickly what we have done, like marathon, round the world, all kind of campaigns. I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna go through this. And I want you to, this is just things that we have done, from soccer to basketball, to sports club, to anything that 60 minutes to move, round the world. We have done this, uh, this was 24,000 kids to move with a, with a pedometer who can move. Uh, challenge, there's all kind of things an energy campaign, and this is just like a lot of stuff. I'm not going to go through any of this. Then I show you in the end, live show. Millions of kids were moving with a live show. You have to have an imbalance. Don't move too much. And the end is this. Today, our goal is to make kids have fun. That's your goal. You have to do it in the community. The future is this. The last slide. There is ismen. There's communism. There's socialism. There's capitalism. I think now, today, it's going to be naturalism. People are going to go back in time and go naturalism. In 30 years ahead, are you filming it? 30 years, it's going to be minimalism. That's what's going to happen. So, architectures are important because if an architect doesn't make the, the whole town look good, he's going to kill more people than anybody, more than an army. So I need you to do this now, in the last. Take the person next to you, grab it and ask, what's your name? What's your name? <laughs> say, what's your name? You say, who's number one and who's number two? You say, you are number one and I'm number two. And you're going to do this. I need your help for 10 seconds. I have like 40 seconds.
Okay? Close your hand. Person number one is going to close their hand like this. Close it. Really close it. Close the hand. Person number two have 10 seconds to open it. Are you ready when I say? One, two, and go! 10 seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, four. Come on. Come on, open it. Come on. And stop. Stop before you hurt somebody. Stop. <laughs> stop. Okay, look. 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 Are you ready? Okay, I'm ready. So look. Open it, please. <laughs> I, 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 I told you, I told you that you have to open it. I didn't tell you how you should do it. But you went straight into, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill her. I'm going to take it. But maybe you just need to communicate. And then it's happened. Everybody stand up. Stand up. We're going to move for 30 seconds. Okay, stand up. We're going to do this. Can you do this? With this hand here. Muscle. Can you do? Okay, the other hand. And ah, boom. Because we're going to do great things. We're going to clap. We're going to run a little bit. We're going to jump this way. Boing. This way, Dwang and a superhero pose. Are you ready to do this music? Lot of volume, please. Okay, ready? Love what you do, guys, have fun. And now we do it. More music. And.